this is Hamza Rifa Dosan. You're watching Islamabad today on Think Tech Hawaii. Today we're going to be speaking about the drama industry, the scripts, the drama actors, the lighting, the cameramen, and what it actually takes to produce a wonderful drama that has an everlasting impact on the society. I have one of Pakistan's leading directors and actors with me, and we're going to be discussing with him what it actually takes to make sure that an absolute fantastic drama can actually come onto the scene and have an everlasting impact on the public. We can't just focus on drama and, I mean, I remember when I was growing up, uh, we had Pakistan television PTV and they used to show such amazing dramas. Ashwak Ahmed Saab used to write, Banu Kutsia used to write, Asina Moin used to write. Mm -hmm. And the scripts were so good. There were different kinds of shows. There were, I mean, shows for children, there were shows for older people, there were shows for people who like comedy. And now I feel that we don't have that. We just have one one kind of genre that is being catered to everybody. So what is that? There's nothing on television for children. Um, there's, there are no comedy shows. Like then, I mean, it's just something that I feel like, uh, you know, there's a lot that can be done. <laughs> so when you talk about shortcomings, I mean... Uh... Where do you think you know the solution lies? How are you going to how are you going to rectify it? Again, I mean, it's not up to me, um, but I feel like we, as an industry, need to step outside a comfort zone, mm -hmm. and we need to kind of start. Uh, I mean, start. I, I feel start producing um, content that's. You know that's that's more responsible. I feel. Okay. Okay. So, Mr. Osman, in two, uh, 2022, you re released Golaborani, which is a horror short film that won the best short film award at the 2002 Los Angeles, uh, you know, uh, science fiction and horror festival. Um, so, tell us um, when when you talk about Golaborani in general, uh, tell us about what it's all about. I mean, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the content, the story. Uh, the significance of the story? Well, I mean, I was, I remember back in 2004, 2005, um, a couple of us friends were sitting and we used to love telling horror stories. And um, we were really fascinated by, you know, haunted houses in um, the country. And, you know, um, one of my friends kind of, told us a story about this university um, and um, it was really intriguing. And I was like, you know, um, I'd love to, like, I, I, I want to see this as a film. But at that point, I mean, the, there was like, we weren't making a lot of movies in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, at that point, I felt like, you know, I should make it, but I didn't. And that story kind of stuck by me. It kind of took me about... I think um, more than a decade to kind of, you know, uh, and uh, it wasn't me actually. I was, I think I was traveling back from Lahore with my wife and, um, you know, I was, we, we were on the road and I'm like, you know, she's like, why don't you, you love directing. Why don't you direct? And I said, you know, it's, it's just too much effort. It's just, you know, I'm acting, I'm earning money. I need to, you know, you have to take some time off and you don't know if you're going to get any returns or anything like that. She's like, but that's what you love doing. I mean, at, at least you will be happy. And um, I was like, yeah, I really want to make this short. And she's like, then you should. And 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 she's the one who actually pushed me to kind of uh, start working on the uh, on the film. And then we got like, uh, other people involved, actors involved. Uh, my partner at the time, uh, who started the production company with me, he was there. And we started this, uh, we started the process of kind of pre-production and getting script written and everything. And at that point, we had no idea that we would send it to festivals or, yeah. you know, we just wanted to finish the film. And, um, you know, once we got the film done, we had a little 
small screening in Islamabad for people who wanted to watch uh, a short horror film. Um, people came, a lot of friends came, a lot of people who we didn't know came. And uh, a lot of people came up to me and uh, said, you know, you really need to send this to festivals. We were actually supposed to release the film a day after the screening online. Um, okay. But then they said, send it to festivals and everything. So we were like, okay, great. Um, I talked to everybody and then they, they were on, all on board. We just, just started submitting uh, the film. I had no hopes because it's a horror film. I don't, I don't think like horror as a genre is, you know, could be like, um, you know, people would kind of, it, it can't be like one of those critically acclaimed uh, hope. And then suddenly we started getting these notifications. Your film's been selected. Your film's won this award. Your film's won that award. And I mean, honestly, all of us were over the moon because everybody worked so hard on the film. And so, uh, so what about what about the domestic response to the movie? I mean, it was almost as if, you know, you, you said that it was an idea that just came out of the blue. And suddenly, you know, everybody's starting to watch it. That basically means that it must have been popular enough for you to, for people to recommend that it should be sent to festivals, right? Well, I mean, so we had like about, I think, 200, 250 people that came that day to watch the film. Okay. Um, in that cinema, that I mean, I, 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 so this is the thing. Every time I make something, I make a short or something. Whenever there's a screening, I, I'm very, very nervous. I don't know why. I, I can't sit. Uh, I was standing at the back and, um, you know, I was just hearing people and their reaction and what parts did they would they react to and what parts they wouldn't um and i think that as a director is also a learning experience for you you know when you see or you know because a lot of times you go like oh i thought they would react to this but they didn't they reacted okay. to this which is something that i didn't expect you know right so right i <clears throat> i was standing there and it was it, i was really nervous but it was overwhelming how we got a standing ovation, um, you know, people would really like the film. And I mean, I, I can't be more thankful to my team. Um, you know, they've done such an amazing job and they did, they, they worked really hard. I mean, you know, when you're working on a short film, that's a low budget film, you don't have a lot of money. There are a lot of things that you have to do yeah. that and actors or produ you know line producers and uh, you know lighting crew don't have to do on a commercial film you know it's a bit it's it, it's more it's a little more difficult for the crew and everybody because you know you probably have to work overtime because you don't have budget to shoot the next day right and they were uh, they were amazing my entire team honestly speaking and i'm so happy that i have this team to you know had to work with and I want to do more stuff with them inshallah hopefully excellent excellent yeah hopefully uh, tell us a little bit about Sinfe Ahan well I mean Sinfe Ahan is um, you know Sinfe Ahan was a drama that uh, you know I didn't care my role was less I I when I was a kid I wanted to go into the um, army um, actually I wanted to go into the air force um, so I, when I got that opportunity to play Captain Daniel, I was like, I'm going to jump onto the opportunity and do this. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, a, it was an interesting experience. It was, you know, I've never seen so many actors on a set uh, together. We had to shoot this scene which was in Aftabad outside PMA. And, uh, you know, it was the, I think the orientation of all the f girls mm -hmm. and their parents had come and their relatives had come to kind of see them off. Mm -hmm. um, so that day it was just, uh, everybody was there. And it was just, um, it, was a, it was a very interesting experience, but we had, a, we had, we had a lot of fun, yeah. That's great. That's great. So what about the contents of the entire drama? I mean, what is the what could be considered to be the major takeaways or what is it about that really inspires people to watch it? It'll inspire a lot of a lot of girls to kind of because, you know, in, in, in our households, it's just I think it's the, 
patriarchal mindset i don't know yeah. what it is it, it, yeah. it's just that oh lad you know the girl can't go into the army why not right i i i i've seen so many girls like i i i i love doing mma and and the amount of girls that come there and they're so good at what they do they can take on so many guys um you know so i mean i don't understand like that that's one thing that will change for a lot of young girls who want to go into the army and they think it's impossible for us to go into the army uh, it's for the boys no it's not um and 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 it will encourage a lot of young girls to kind of take that step and talk to their parents that i you know i've decided i don't want to be an engineer i don't want to be a doctor i want to go into the army you know and and when so many people watch that drama they're like oh yeah we saw that drama and you know there were poor girls who you know i feel like dramas and media and films they impact you on a daily on a daily basis like yeah. you you just there are little things that you see and they you you can they you can normalize them which is also dangerous that's why i media and our dramas have to be more responsible you know so i feel like uh, it will encourage a lot of young girls to take that step and and you know that's that's amazing yeah well we've recently uh, you know seen that in all three of the forces you have increased amount of female participation we're talking about the navy yeah. we're talking about the military we're also talking about the air force here in pakistan um yeah. so do you think that you know such dramas would ensure that uh, the, the current progress would actually you know be taken to a different level altogether where we, you would actually have gender parity in such organizations especially an organization because in pakistan the army is considered to be extremely you know it's it's an extremely important organization it's an organization which exhibits a lot of political clout so when you have gender parity in such organizations that would increase uh, you could say its traction so do you think that you know uh, serials such as sinfe ayaha would uh, result in that sort of gender parity sinfe ayaha sinfe ayaha would uh, result in that sort of gender parity taking place in the you know foreseeable future i hope so I, i i hope so i think i i think the uh, girl, more girls um should if they want to uh, they should mm-hmm. do that they should whatever they want to do they should be able to do that mm-hmm. they should be able to uh make that decision for themselves mm-hmm. you know okay all right so let's come to south asia in general and obviously you have india which has a larger economy it has a larger drama industry uh, and also a larger film industry but in terms of the quality of dramas i think pakistan does take the lead because we've seen that the reviews of pakistani dramas are far more superior as compared to the indians so obviously the indians take the cake as far as uh, you know movies are concerned so when we talk about pakistani dramas and if you compare them with indians uh, where do you think Uh, you know is the uh, or the decisive factors which ensure the pakistani dramas uh, get better reviews than the indian ones i feel it's the direction that their dramas like i i feel like we are also we have also now started producing uh, uh, dramas that can you know you can kind of mistake like you can kind of think it's an indian drama because with the music and the way they direct their dramas they dramatize their content so much that the audience can't relate to it okay you know when you when you make something that has like you know sound effects of like the thunder and drums and you know you're showing a clip again and again and just for the shock factor you i think the audience can relate to that and i feel general direction like it's just so far from reality some of their uh, dramas um but and you know our dramas at, at least used to be very very good and they used to be you know your audience could relate to them uh even now there are a lot of dramas that you know you see and you like like there was this drama that was coming Uh, on television um kuch ankahi mm-hmm. um has sajal in it and uh, it has bilal in it and that that drama i i feel like uh, it, it kind of reminds you of the ptv era it's uh, 
it's very nice so i mean the simplicity of our dramas i i feel is 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 what makes it more relatable to the audience mm-hmm. so we talk about simplicity of dramas i mean do you think the script writers in on both sides of the border especially particularly in pakistan are they actually given the due credit that they deserve i think yes okay i think as actors when we pitched a drama um the first two three questions are who is it written by who is directing it um and then i'd like to read the script or whatever so i think uh, with script writers uh, some of the script writers have made a really big name for themselves um in the drama industry okay but do you think there needs to be more publicity of script writers as compared to maybe you know actors for that matter because what what normally happens with small i think there needs yeah. to be publicity firstly I, and this is something that i really believe in i yeah, think yeah. there needs to Go be ahead. publicity you we need to appreciate all the crew members we don't a lot of people don't realize this your entire eng crew <clears throat> arrives at least an hour hour and a half before you arrive on set they're the ones that leave at the very end you've left everybody else has left they have to pack everything up they have to put it back in the van and then they have to go back they get l- lesser amount of sleep they have to wake up early uh so i think they really need to be appreciated are uh, the people the makeup artists the uh, the, the script writers the people behind the uh, the, the the scenes really need to be appreciated we only even though i am an actor but i feel like we only appreciate actors we don't we don't appreciate anybody else i and and the and especially the eng crew i i i mean i know i i'm i work as a director as well and i know how hard they work um so i i feel that they need to be appreciated um yeah Okay so i mean uh, obviously i do believe that comparisons are odious you don't need to compare apples with oranges india is a different country with a different dynamic altogether but yeah. do you see any sort of i mean uh, lots of pakistani actors have gone and worked in uh, indian movies uh, and they've worked in the indian industry uh, given the current situation i mean you have two nuclear powers were which are always on the brink of war i mean it might not necessarily be a nuclear war but it could be a conventional war for that matter uh, is there any possibility of uh, drama actors going and working in the indian industry or vice versa or do you think that the climate is just way too hostile for that to happen right now i mean uh, right now i don't see it happening um but who knows about the future but right now it's i, I think it's it's a bit difficult for that to happen you okay know? so i i just don't feel like uh, right now is a good time i i think the respect needs to be mutual it needs to be from you know both ways uh, so yeah i feel like if that happens if we're given respect we will give respect and i think then it could probably happen but i don't see that happening right now all right so let me just uh, narrow the question down at a personal level do you foresee yourself uh, working in indian movies or in the indian drama no. in the future so you you basically believe it has to be pakistan or if there's any other outlet it has to be in the american industry which continues to be the most dominant industry in the world i don't uh, again i i i feel like you know um you need to be able to i mean i i don't i don't see myself working over there uh, okay i don't i don't i don't think they'll ever offer me anything but i don't think i'll probably be doing that i can't really say for sure usman because anything can happen at any point in time it could it could definitely but i mean see the thing is again my 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 thing is the res- respect is both ways if you give respect get respect you know it's it's that simple okay. that if that happens for sure you know but i mean it has to be it has to be a mutual thing okay. you can't you know and it goes in in every and any relationship uh, if you're not getting respect or if you're getting whatever like if you're not getting respect and you still want to kind of be associated i mean that's just 
I feel like I, it doesn't set well with me. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, well, it's understandable. And I think a lot of Pakistani actors or Indian actors, for that matter, do share that sentiment. I mean, it goes both ways. Yeah. Um, so one notable trend in the drama industry is the influx of Turkish dramas within Pakistan. I mean, they're getting more screen time. We've seen that a Turkish dramas, for example, Erturul, correct me if I'm pronouncing it uh, incorrectly, but, you know, Erturul for that matter, or you can talk about, um, you know, there's so many other Turkish dramas. Um, for that trend, do you think that trend is a healthy one? It uh, promotes greater bilateral cooperation or bilateral goodwill between the drama industries? Or do you think that uh, the influx of tr Turkish dramas are threatening the viewership of indigenous Pakistani dramas? No, I don't think that it's, it's threatening anything. I think they're making better content. They're, uh, they're, they're, their stories are better. Their cinematography is better. Their mm -hmm. score is better. Their sound is better. Their, you know, everything is, everything gels together really well. And it's, at the end of the day, it's a good product. Now, you can't stop people liking a good product. That's, uh, I just don't understand that. So if it's coming to Pakistan and if people are liking it, I'm nobody, <clears throat> nobody should be able to say that, oh, this shouldn't play on TV. Why? I mean, it's a good show. Why would you want to stop? Exactly. Why would you want to stop people from watching a good show? If they like it, they like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Osman, actors and actresses have been pretty vocal about the political situation in the country as well. I, I mean, obviously, I don't get involved in politics. Oh, you don't get involved don't. in politics at all, but you do pray for a more peaceful, prosperous, and you could say, uh, yeah, you do, you do for that matter. So every Pakistani does. So lastly, if we come towards the message that you want to give young aspiring actors trying to make a mark in the field, what would that be? Because there are lots of actors who actually tap the doors of uh, the Pakistani drama industry. They might be very talented, but uh, certain roadblocks actually come. I'm not going to get into the nepotism debate. We've already had that with many actors before. Um, but what, do you, what would be the message uh, from your side to young aspiring actors who want to make a mark in the drama industry? Um, my advice is be patient. If you're if you're working hard, if you're giving it everything, be patient. A lot of actors I come across, they go like, oh, we've struggled for a year or two years and now we can't anymore. I feel like the patience has kind of come. Like, it took me 12 years. Um, there's so many other actors who've worked really hard to get where they are. So I feel like the patience is lacking. I, I might be wrong. There might, might be a lot of young actors who are really struggling hard. Um, Osama, for example, the kid who was in our uh, short, Gulabo, he's worked really hard and I've seen him and I've heard about his struggle as well. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, but there's some kids I've also seen who, uh, you know, who get really, uh, you know, they're very let down by not getting the opportunities in a couple of years and they're like, well, we don't want to do this. We'll do something else. No. I mean, if this is what you want to do, I know it's difficult, but give some time to it. Give it a bit of time. And I'm pretty sure it'll happen. And also, if just, just, just don't lose hope. You know, this is very important. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of kids go like, oh, you know, I'm, 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 I've got, you know, I don't want to now act and everything. And they're really good actors. Why? Why do you want to waste this talent? Just be a more, bit more patient. Um, and and, and I, if you're working hard and if you're giving it your all, I'm pretty sure you, you, you'll get the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And do you think there needs to be a more enhanced culture of auditioning in Pakistan where, you know, you yeah. from the general public? Casting couch, if anybody's calling you, if any director says, bhai, come over come here no on audition yes no casting I, I just don't understand um and also i see very few people doing auditions um that is also i think um one thing that i feel like more companies need to do auditions for young actors um regularly okay so why do you think that's the case why don't people audition for young talent 
can i i don't know i'm honestly i i'm very far away from the industry i live in islamabad i yes. do my bit and then i come back and i like to be around my family and everything so i don't know exactly how things work but i i do feel like more more production houses and uh, more uh, they need to audition they need to have auditions have these pamphlets and you know kind of spread them across social media that these auditions are happening and young actors were interested please uh, email submit your uh, you know application and then go ahead usman mukhtar thank you so much for joining me on the show thank you thank you thank you hamza All right, so that's all that we have for now from Islamabad today on Think Tech Hawaii. This is Hamza Rifa Hussain. You can log on to our social media pages. This episode will be aired and ensure that your comments actually do come in because your feedback is extremely valuable. Take care. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.